Tonight on Country Squire Radio, we're talking top three lighters. That's right. It's happening right now. Who's going to choose? Who's going to decide? It's going to be John David. Spoilers. <laughs> also, we got a pipe question of the week this week all about taxation as well as uh, the shipping of tobacco across state lines. What does it mean for the future or present or past? That will be answered along with quick fire questions, listener feedback, and more happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, man. Man, good evening to you. How are you doing tonight? You know, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm uh, about, to, about to light up my uh, 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 Mearsham uh, claw pipe here. You got the uh, whole gothic that, uh, claw yeah, thing. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's turning a nice... Uh, Nice amber color and uh, loaded up with some uh, or like golden slice tonight. It was it was between that or Deception Pass from Seattle Pipe Club and um, I don't know. I've been I've been kind of hitting the Deception Pass pretty hard lately, so I, I decided to go back to an old favorite. Now, now you say amber, but I mean it is it is still well, pretty bright. No, on the, it on is the, the, the thing I love about these claw Meerschaum pipes. If you're you know not familiar. A lot of Meerschaum pipes traditionally are carved into a claw shape, uh, like a dragon claw or an eagle claw, and then holding a bowl. And and the bowl uh, it, is kind of a separate piece almost. Mm, it's all one mm -hmm. piece of Meerschaum, but um, but it's a separate you know yeah, piece. The, the and so, talons are, are much separated from the actual heat of the bowl. Yeah, and what what I like about these pipes is that oftentimes uh, the the coloring will be different on the bowl than it will on the actual talon part. And yeah. so since I touch the talon, I'm not one of these people that doesn't touch the Meerschaum I actually hold the pipe. You, do um, you rub it all over your face? I I, I don't. Okay. It, it would be, yeah, it would be, <laughs> it'd be nasty as sin if I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so when we hold this uh, pipe, the talons kind of turn one color. They're kind of turning more of an amber color. But if you look closely, the bowl of the pipe uh, is turning almost more of a more of a pink color. It's kind of kind of interesting. The top is charred, obviously, but um, yeah, if you look closely, it's kind of a pink color. It's really nice. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, just something kind of different. I like it. Smokes a, it's a it's a great smoking pipe. Well, it's it's got a we got a we got a good room note going right now with that uh, tobacco as well. Uh, man, okay, so uh, before we even like go through, you know, the the whole uh, housekeeping items and talking about all the the wonderful stuff we like to talk about before we kick off a show, we have to acknowledge the fact that uh, you and I are not in this room alone right now. We're not. No, We're in not. fact, we have got a live studio audience. Now, that's not necessarily a new thing, although it is a rare thing. It is. Uh, however, uh, tonight we actually have in the live studio audience Josh, who traveled all the way from Venezuela. By way of Georgia, by way of Georgia, or other, or or the other way around. Well, he's from Georgia by way of Venezuela, and uh, right, and, and yeah, <laughs> originally from Georgia, a school teacher out in Venezuela, and uh, and right here in the Country Squire. Uh, w welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for being here, and uh, yeah, and, and being part of our, our live studio audience. It's so great. Josh um, was actually here last year. Oddly enough, I don't think this was planned at all, but um, he was here last year the day I bought. The country squire oh wow and that's a historic moment it, it, it wasn't planned at all and then of course he you know just pops in tonight and, and we're honored to have him yeah um and, and but it was so funny because the day he was here and the the hours he was here um i was in the process of getting our uh insurance so, so any business obviously to sign a lease you know for a business you have to get insurance for your business oh, so, of course so you know this shopping center they're like yeah we'd love for you to rent from us but you know we, we need to make sure you're insured so if someone falls and you know, has an accident or something, you're covered. Well, I was scrambling that day at the last minute because I didn't know this because I I'm, I'm, was, you know, an idiot. Before that, you pack out this place looked. with a bunch of liabilities. Right, exactly, exactly. And like, yeah, it, you know, so, and, and most people that come in here are huge liabilities, as, you, as you're well aware of. <laughs> yes, and so, but anyway, I was scrambling that day all day to get like this insurance lined up, running all over town, like, you know, talking to uh, providers about getting quotes and all this stuff literally trying to pull my hair out. I mean, it was just awful. I probably said some really shameful things that day. And Josh was just here, man, just hanging out. Like, you know, I think he, uh, he, uh, that night, like went with Austin, one of our regulars and they got some beers and, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, easy going Josh, man, just another day in the shop. So that's awesome. It was awesome. Well, uh, well th this visit will be somewhat less historic than all of that, but uh, we are glad we, you're here. Gosh, we hope so. <laughs> hey man, uh, historic things are happening. The, uh, the pipe community is ever growing. And, uh, Hey, if you're out in the Arizona area, uh, there's actually a pipe club that is specifically for you. Now, this is uh, for those living in and around the Mesa er era. It's me it would be Mesa. I'm sorry, uh, Mesa area. Miso. Me the, the, me <laughs> the Miso, Arizona. Uh, no, Miso in Mississippi. Anyway, uh, Mesa, Arizona. Now, this is specifically the Arizona Pipe Club. They've got a new website, azpipeclub.com. Beautiful website. I really encourage you all to go check it out. And this is, you know, you don't just have to be in the Mesa area. This is something that 
uh, you know, if you're wanting to get involved in, but you live on the other side of the state, I'm sure they'd be happy to link up with you. Absolutely. Um, but every single second Saturday of each month, they have their meetup at 1 p.m. at Big Sticks Cigars in uh, in Mesa, Mesa, Arizona. So y'all be sure to uh, to check them out. Let them know you heard about it on Country Squire Radio, too. Shout out to the uh, the Pipe Club in Arizona. Uh, and uh, and for those of you all, all around uh, uh, the, this great state and great, great planet that we're on that are, uh, you know, getting involved with your local pipe clubs and your local pipe communities. Uh, of course, the local pipe community in Texas is getting ready for their big event. Yeehaw! That's right. This is the Texas Pipe Show. It's coming up really soon, man. Get out, little doggies. Get, yeah. <laughs> round, round them up. And Keel Hall. No, that's a pirate thing. <laughs> Uh, high noon. Pew, pew, pew. What? Did you just pull like a Yosemite Sam? Yeah, I think from, you did. He's from Texas, right? I, uh, you know, we'll run with. That. All right, fair enough. <laughs> One way or the other, uh, the Texas Pipe Show, October seventh at uh, Pop Safari Room in Fort Worth, Texas. You're not going to want to miss it. It's amazing it. anyone listens to us. It's, just it, really, it's it. really remarkable. Well, for those amazing people, we do hope that you're out there, that you're able to join us. Come on down. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get some barbecue, because that's what you do in Texas. You also enjoy smoking your pipe, a long smoke competition. It is going to be a blast. So mark your calendars, set the date, save the date, and make sure you got a place to stay. October 7th at Pop Safari Room in Fort Worth, Texas. All right. Now then. That's the stuff that is going on out in the world. Now we got to talk about what's going on uh, right here in this show. And there's so much. There is so much going on. Um, you know, we mentioned that I think last week uh, that we have been nominated for, or we're, we're in the process of being nominated for the People's Choice Awards in uh, this year's podcast. Uh, People's Choice Award. Uh, yeah, uh, People's Choice Award. So if you haven't done so already, <laughs> uh, click the link that's in the, the episode description. Uh, we'll, we've got a link that's right there. Nominate Country Squire Radio. We are in the arts category. Uh, I, you know, as I see comments, especially from last week's episode, I'm wondering why we're not in the comedy category or like the did they have a bad comedy category? Well, I mean, you know, there's no accounting for taste, but one way or the other, <laughs> uh, you know, pipes are a form of art uh, uh, blending tobacco. Obviously, yeah. you are yeah. a tobacconist. You are also an artist. Um, and so in many respects, we're in the arts category. No, that makes sense. That may, I, I feel like I'm a tobacco artist. <laughs> One way or the other. Uh, <laughs> head over there, nominate Country Squire Radio for that. Also, uh, just a quick plug, Flash TV Talk and TV and Film as well. So if you want to... That's great. want to get that in there as well. Hey, Bo, as yeah. an aside, uh, we'll want this edited out, but can you check our uh, camera real quickly? I think it may have accidentally moved on its own. Oh. And, and, by, oh. and by moving on its own, I, I think... This is not Josh's fault. Someone, it's I feel not. Like we need to because because it seems as though someone in the live studio the, this, audience the, who should probably know better. We got we got a veteran. There's probably and we got a, a newbie. There's probably a time and a place for that. Okay, great. but uh, we'll just say this person is much beloved and uh, joins us from time to time. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Oh, uh, someone's right. so sorry, but we're not going to shame them. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little. Only a little. All right. Uh, let me uh, let me pull back up the notes. Sorry about that, uh, Mike. We'll uh, pick back up right here. Well, man, we also have got uh, uh, names to, to add to the ever-growing International Pipe Club. That's right. Uh, joining us at the Pilgrim level, ladies and gentlemen, give it up, Brian C. Hanford and I Hanford it's Hanford all right but but technically speaking Han and Han were both pronounced in Star Wars and it was spelled the exact same way as Hanford here so well now did, in Star Wars was it act, was he actually referred to as Han uh yeah yeah actually, I guess he was Lando, Calrissian. He, Lando did yeah Han! I, yeah Han! I remember that now. Still to yeah to yeah. I totally forgot about that okay okay absolutely yeah, so yeah. uh so Hanford is now joining us along yeah with, Brian Brian Hanford thanks for uh thanks for hopping on board man along with uh Joshua Minili Minili Mini yeah. me me Neely <laughs> I am Neely you Neely, me Neely, me Neely, us Neely. <laughs> Joshua, man, thanks so much for hopping on uh, at the at the Pilgrim level, man. It, uh, our our pipe club continues to grow, dude. It's been it's been great. Absolutely. Now we also have uh, supporting us as well uh, as a as a patron, Christopher Nielsen, and this is great, man. So Christopher, not only is he supporting us as a as a patron of Country Squire Radio, uh, he's done something really special, and I think is it's kind of like a, a first ever done before, um, which is that uh, in in his uh, in his father's name, he has also made an additional donation to the show. Yeah. Uh, in order to uh, to get his uh, give give his dad the gift of the full uh, two hundred plus episodes of Country Squire Radio. What a treat! As man. a birthday present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got to say, uh, you know, from your son Christopher. Uh, this goes out to Jim Nelson. Uh, Jim, hang on. Let me let me pull it up so I can say it right here. Jim, there is more to life 
than early morning pipe. Have a wonderful birthday to you. And from what we hear, that is a dang fine Dagner poker you got there. I'm wow. guessing I'm, I'm guessing that's super inside. But wow. One way or the other. I think so. I think so. <laughs> Man, that is great. That is great. Dude, yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Chris, for uh for doing that for your dad, Jim. Uh what a what a treat. And uh man, that's a, yeah, it's a great man, awesome, awesome thing Isn't to that do. Cool? Uh, you know, we've got uh ha there's over two hundred episodes, right? So I mean yeah, we've got Jim, that much of a backlog. Um you Jim, know, check your uh check, get, keep an e uh, eye on your email uh, and you'll uh, and you'll see that in your in your email inbox. So, yeah. uh, shout out to Jim. There's a lot of interesting stuff uh back in some of those episodes. There's a lot of terrible awful stuff too. But, see but in the <laughs> comments, man. You know, that's that's the funny thing is the uh you know the of course we got the uh, the pipe club now has the squire uh, lounge online right, and right. seeing kind of the commentary as people are going back through the backlog of those archives and uh commenting on 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 old favorites like the yeah. Beatles versus Dave Matthews. And, <laughs> Uh, you know the, the the great cornbread debate and and all of those uh, wonderful. Uh, oh, we gems. should have a cornbread and milk pairing with the uh, <laughs> with pipe tobacco. If it gets his barbecue, I'm in. <laughs> I am in. That's so lame. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's not lame, and that's the topic that we have got tonight. Uh, you know, longtime listeners know that we. Uh, I think uh, you know, in, in the last several months. Uh, we started a new series of top three. Uh, gosh, actually, now that I say that, it was probably over a year ago that we started that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, the first one we did was top three cherry tobaccos. I think we've done. Uh, I think we've done Virginias at some point. But basically, it's been taking uh, top three yeah. various uh, things within the tobacco world. Although typically. It has been about the tobacco. Well, tonight we're doing a bit of a variation on the top three, talking top three lighters. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is a conversation piece that comes up a lot in the shop. People, um, you know, initially when people start smoking a pipe, they they think they almost have to use a match. Like they're going to be shamed and uh, and and judged thoroughly if they don't use a match. And so, you know, we we kind of have these guys. They'll come in, they'll buy all their pipe stuff, and they're, um, you know, getting ready to check out. But then they're like, they're they're always like, can I? can I use a lighter? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and a lot of times it is, uh, it is easier to use a lighter because most folks, of course, uh, smoke outside nowadays. I mean, th these are, you know, people, uh, a lot of folks just with how times have changed have, uh, have migrated outside instead of smoking inside. Of course, at a smoke shop like the Country Squire, we have the luxury of smoking uh, inside. We have our beautiful smoke eaters that uh, that help us not smell like ashtrays. But, um, <laughs> but you know, when, when you're outside and in the elements, a lot of times it is, um, harder to use a match. And so I, you know, we have customers and, uh, pipe smokers that get frustrated with that, obviously. And so, um, you know, I, I tell folks, you know, use a lighter. If that's going to, if a, if a match is going to keep you from smoking your pipe, grab the closest lighter, uh, you can. And so, um, and so there are a whole host of pipe lighters. There's some, there's some amazing ones. There's some really, really crummy ones. There's, uh, there's super expensive ones that are way overpriced and there are, uh, and there are some that are dirt cheap, you know, and they're just all kind of over the map. Yeah. We, we carry some other pipe shops are, are going to carry, you know, a different selection. Uh, you know, you can find some on, uh, you know, online retailers, uh, Amazon, uh, you know, some people are stuck on the Bic lighter, you know, our, our, our good friend, Brian Levine, he swears by, uh, the Dejeep. Uh, you know, triple filled lighter, you know, that big chunky Dejeep lighter that uh, you can find at a lot of smoke shops that just, just, you know, it's like a Bic, but it's oversized. It's it lasts giant. forever. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of, a lot of pipe smokers like that. And so uh, everyone's kind of got their own thing, but we, but we thought we'd dive into, you know, just, just a top three from, uh, from John David's perspective. Now this is interesting. The, the concept of kind of the, the snob being like, you know, Oh, well you must, you know, light with the match as opposed to a lighter. I've actually had the opposite uh, thing happen to me. I actually did have somebody, I was lighting my pipe with a match and, uh, and I had somebody lecture me for about 15 minutes uh, about how lighting with a match is like the worst possible thing I could do to my pipe tobacco. Dude, th this is why I... <laughs> that, we're adding that to my p pet peeve oh, episode. Oh, that'll be on the next one. Like that, next I'm, one. I'm sorry, but that's just ridiculous. <laughs> like, it, like who's going to lecture you about using a match on anything? Well, I didn't, like what? I, I, I'm not going to mention his name on air, but um, yeah, yeah. He's well, one of our locals. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll save that. We'll save that for uh, what a for, dummy. We'll save that for the pet. <laughs> But yeah, top three lighters, man. Well, I thought we'd hop into it. Of course, um, if you're familiar with uh, coming around the shop, you uh, occasionally might see me smoke a pipe myself. And I, I've been stuck on uh, the same pipe lighter now for, for a few months. And and at number three of all the lighters that I've kind of surveyed and, 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 and been through and, um, you know, experienced, worked on, 
uh, you know, sent off for repairs, things of that, that nature. Um, you know, I, I constantly keep coming back to a few a few lighters. And so uh, coming in at number three uh, for me is actually going to be the Zippo pipe lighter. Uh, but That's it's not, it's not the Zippo pipe lighter. Oh. It's 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 a Zippo case, uh, which is just the iconic, of course, Zippo case. Uh, and what I use and 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 love so much is the Vertigo butane insert. Um, huh. So so what what they've done here, and of course Zippo. Uh, you know, has made a pipe lighter. That's it's an iconic thing, just right along with uh, normal Zippo uh, lighters. You know, it uses butane, but uh, the the Zippo uh, pipe lighter design. It's a great design. It's got a hole in the side, and so you just hold it right over your pipe, uh, strike the flint wheel, and the um, the flame goes directly into the bowl of your pipe, making it making it really nice. So, so in this instance, I mean, the way that you're holding it, uh, you know, is where it's kind of flat. Yeah, you know, it's, that's it's right. You're like holding a, it flat, kind of over the top of your bowl. That's, right. That's correct. Instead of uh, you know, instead of lighting your cigarette, you know, kind of kind of up and down. Yeah. So, but the Zippo pipe lighter traditionally was uh, created, you know, so you can hold it, uh, you know, horizontally over the bowl of your pipe, and as you suck in on the pipe, you puff the the flame goes directly into it's the bowl. Into well, the problem with the traditional Zippo bowl or the the traditional Zippo lighter insert is that it's a Zippo, <laughs> <laughs> and and Zippos are great, right? It's iconic. Uh, it makes, of course, the the wonderful Zippo noise we all know and love. Um, you know, it's that it's that kind of thing that uh, is just you know th they make tons of different designs. A lot of uh, Zippos have been passed down through generations and things of that nature. Um, but the the problem with the Zippo <laughs> insert after the apocalypse, it'll be a Twinkies, cockroaches, and Zippos. And Zippos, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and and you know the the Zippo. What what's 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 the problem? One of the problems with the Zippo, um, anyway, is that the Zippo leaks fluid very easily. Ooh. Um, and, and so you, if, if you're not using your Zippo every day and you're not super careful with it, uh, the fluid can actually come out of the Zippo and actually spill into your pants. Um, another thing, even if it doesn't spill, it also evaporates easily. And so, you know, you can just load your Zippo up with Zippo fluid, let it sit there for three days and not touch it. And when you come back to it, it's just completely empty because oh, uh, maybe the heat has just caused it to evaporate or something. Huh, now there's yeah. ways to, to monkey with that, to kind of, you know, help help with the process. But, um, you know, that's, those are common, uh, you know, criticisms of the Zippo, uh, used for a pipe. Also, of course, obviously is the smell and the taste of the Zippo lighter fluid. So some people kind of like that. They kind of, you know, to, that initial smell of the Zippo lighter fluid, it kind of brings back memories or, uh, you know, is pleasing to them. But a lot of folks, they, you know, don't care for it, it almost has like a, a, you know, just a, well, I mean, it's it's lighter fluid. It's ah, like, I love the smell of lighter yeah. fluid. Ah, morning. the taste of lighter fluid in the morning <laughs> with my bacon and eggs. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, what a lot of companies have done, and I'm surprised Zippo never did this themselves, but a lot of companies have created um, inserts for the Zippo pipe lighter. Okay. And this is great. So you take your traditional Zippo insert out and you uh, put in your own insert, which you've purchased. Now, this one actually comes from vertigo and we love it it uh it fits this, this comes in at number three on my top three pipe lighters okay um, okay so this goes directly into your zippo it, it's um, a z pipe and it yeah it's a, it's the vertigo z pipe okay and uh and so this goes directly into your zippo uh it takes butane so it's super clean and it has the quartz ignition on it so there's no flint wheel to to mess with um now i actually prefer the flint because and we'll talk about that later uh, the flint wheel also, you know, always just seems to be more, um, more reliable. There's less parts to go wrong, all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, you, know, yeah, that, you hear, that, you're the strike, right? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. iconic strike. Yeah. But, um, but with the butane pipe lighter, this is a uh, quartz ignited. Now what that means is that, um, there's actually a lot of folks, you know, when they see lighters that have these little strikes like that, um, they'll see a little spark and they'll be like, well, is there a battery in it or how does that work? Mm -hmm. There's actually a piece of, uh, a small piece of quartz in there. And, and that, that stone, I'm probably using all kinds of terrible, terribly wrong words and we'll have like hate mail from geologists, or <laughs> but that, but that stone in there is, is, uh, there's a plunger that puts tons of pressure on that stone, uh, for just a split second to create a spark. Really? And that's what is creating the spark that ignites the gas on a, on a quartz lighter. And so this technology is actually kind of old. It's been around I for, mean, that's, for that's, several decades. That's the old, you know, you'd strike in the quartz with the Yeah, thing well, the in, instead of a flint, right, you're right. just using the, the quartz. But uh, it's so efficient and it's so, uh, you know, I mean, it looks electronic that a lot of folks, you know, assume that the lighter um, that starts 
with the quartz thing like that has a um, huh. has a battery in it, and, and and oftentimes it does not. So, uh, Wait, so anyway, all right. So help me out with this because yeah, I, sure. I don't know that I'm fully following here. So did okay. you? Is this a custom job essentially that you did in terms of putting this in a Zippo? I yeah, mean, I know that a lot of people do it. That's but. right. So so there are as many pros as there are to the Zippo insert. There are you know obviously some cons. So, yeah. Um, it, the, the Zippo insert, you have to, of course, have the Zippo first. So, so I have to have the Zippo case, right. um, you know, which I've owned for a long time. You take the, the, you know, the insert that comes in the Zippo out and then you buy this other piece. One of the pros about this is that it's just really inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, you know, these things are between 15 and $20 and, um, they're real reliable too. The thing I like about the, the vertigo butane insert is that, uh, it holds a good amount of fluid, but it also um, has a clear tank. There are other uh, other other Zippo inserts that have opaque tanks, so you can't see uh, you know how much fluid is left inside the inside the lighter. Uh, but this one is not that case. It's got uh, just a clear tank. Um, it's also um, you know adjustable, and so you can sit there and you know turn it kind of up and down. Um, and then uh, you know obviously it's inexpensive, so. Um, you know, cons on this, obviously, you, you know, you have to buy the Zippo case, but, you know, a lot of people, they have these uh, Zippos, they've collected Zippos over the years. Uh, they like different designs. Maybe they've got one with their favorite football team on it or, mm -hmm. you know, something their granddad gave to them or something like that's got their initials engraved, you know, but they don't really use it because it doesn't hold fluid. Well, with this, you know, you can just take any Zippo you've got laying around and actually put this in there. Um, and then all of a sudden it becomes much more functional and practical. Yeah. So. Well, plus um, you have kind of the cool narrative of using something that, you know, had, had a, a product that already had some history to it. No, that's right. Trying to get into something new. That's right, um, we, which I think a lot of people appreciate. So um, the only, you know, some other, other cons about this, um, it, this particular lighter uh, from Vertigo doesn't have any significant warranty. So, you know, if you buy this just from, you know, uh, like an, you know, eBay or something like that, uh, you're not going to be able to probably return this to, to vertigo to get a, a refund on it so you'll have to have to you know purchase it or you know work with a um an authorized dealer which is which is a con on that because you know it's it's not like zycar where you just wherever you buy it you just send it in and they'll they'll replace it or fix it um you know the, the good thing is is it's kind of an inexpensive lighter which is nice but um another con on this is it doesn't fit all the old Zippo cases. Mm. And so a lot of these older cases, particularly the ones that date to mid-century and before a lot of World War II uh, era cases, uh, these Zippos will not, the, the insert will not fit those. But um, but any of the modern cases uh, that have been made certainly in the past uh, 30 years, uh, as long as it's not marked as a vintage replica, um, it should be able to take the Zippo insert from Vertigo. So kind of nice. All right. Well, there yep. you go. Yep. Uh, so we would define this as the Zippo Z pipe. Uh, this is the zip. This is the uh, Vertigo Z pipe, and it's a Zippo insert. All right. Yeah. That very simple name. How confusing is that? <laughs> <laughs> so that's number three. Yeah, that's number three. Number two. Number two. Um, so I, this is going to surprise some people. I went back and forth on this a little bit, but I, I, I'm, I'm very confident in my decision here. Um, the old boy style lighter is so mm. incredibly iconic. And I don't even know where it, you know, the name old boy came from. I'd actually love to know some history behind that. But um, Corona, of course, makes the most, uh, the most iconic old boy uh, lighter. Beers. Uh, beers, right. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> um, you know, and, and, and so you know, you've got the, the concept of an old boy is you've got a, a, a hammer that flips up, you strike the wheel, uh, the flame comes out on the side, and it's just the perfect angle for uh, for uh, light, lighting your pipe. Okay, can I confess something real quick? Yeah, sure. Old boy style, like they're the most, like you said, the most iconic uh, pipe lighters that are out there. To this day, I am still intimidated by them. Yeah, they just, no, there's yeah. There's something about the top of them. There's so much moving parts that it seems so complicated. It does. It, you look at it, and it's almost like, uh, the inside of a gadget was turned inside out right, or something. Right. And so you're like looking at these. Yeah, it is, it is. It really <laughs> is. You're looking at all these parts and these gizmos that, uh, you know, you almost feel like, you know, it's like if I looked at the inside of a computer, I'd be like, I'm going to let Bo deal with that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be like, I'm going to let Briar deal exactly. with that. And Briar would be like, that's going in the trash, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, the old boy style lighter is, is great. Um, it, the most iconic one now is probably the Corona. 
coming in at number two for me is not the Corona. Coming oh. in, coming in at number two for me, and this will probably uh, it'll probably uh, surprise some people. Uh, but it is the Karibi Kabuto. Now I love I love Karibi lighters, and and uh, you know they're kind of the newer kids on the block. Mm-hmm. They hadn't been around for a whole long time, at least in the American market. Um, and uh, they're distributed by Laudisi of America, same folks that distribute uh, Savinelli, Rossi Pipes, Cornell and Deal Tobaccos, GLP's Tobaccos. So, uh, you know, it's got a, a good company that stands behind them and, and warranties them for a couple of years. But um, I, I'm choosing a much less expensive lighter over the Corona. And and, and the reason I'm doing that, it, it's it's funny. Um, you know, I, I love the Corona. Obviously, you know, these are both beautiful lighters. The uh, you know, Corona is, is just iconic and it's always, you know, uh, going to work as advertised and everything. But, you know, nowadays this this pipe lighter, this Corona pipe lighter retails for one hundred and ninety two dollars. Huh. Um, this Karibi lighter, the Kabuto, um, this one is is uh, the MSRP is one hundred and five dollars on this on this. Okay. Lighter. OK, um, now significantly it, uh, it's significantly less, but yeah. it also looks stunning. Uh, the the Karibis are just fantastic lighters. They they look they just look fantastic. Uh, they they have all the you know bling or the classic look that you might expect from uh, from an old boy lighter. Um, and uh, paneling too with with um, yeah this particular one it's got the silver uh, okay. silver lines on so, it. So so yeah. but that is could, could be different from various Kabuto lighters. That's right. Okay. Yeah yeah they make other they make other designs gotcha. as well. Okay. So um, this per- particular Karibi it looks. Uh, like the quality lighter that it is, it's got a very, uh, very, um, uh, the action is very crisp on it. And so when you flick it, it just makes very uh, crisp, um, clicky, you know, clicky actions, which it's very, you always know exactly when it's done opening and you know exactly when it's closed, which is real uh, <laughs> satisfying. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, these things that wouldn't, uh, you know, it'd just be more nebulous because maybe you don't hear the gaskets working or right. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, so, that's good. Um, yeah, the the thing I like about this over the Corona Old Boy as well. There's a couple things, but um, the the top part uh, that uh, Karibi actually refers to as the cap toggle. <laughs> so it's hard to explain this without without looking at it. But on a Karibi lighter, it's got this kind of fin thing that pops up um, that you can uh, use as almost a trigger to open the hammer. Um, so on an old boy style lighter, there's a hammer. You, you, you turn the hammer up to turn the gas on and then strike the flint wheel, uh, to turn on the, uh, uh the flame there. Well, that's not too bad. Um, and, and the, the thing I love about the Karibi is it's got this extra little fin that you can kind of pop up on there. Whereas, uh, other old boys don't have that. Don't have Oh that. yeah. You're kind of pushing on, on the, uh, yeah, you're pushing the, uh, on the hammer rather than using that little, uh, that little fin oh, gizmo oh that, um, uh, you know, that, that works. So. I like that. Um, yeah, it's just really, really nice. The the thing I like about old boy style lighters too, particularly the Karibi, um, is that it comes out uh, so open at this angle that you can get exactly where you want to within the pipe bowl mm. um, to to light your pipe. And so let's say your pipe has gone out, or in your relighting, or let's say you're uh, smoking your pipe and y- you uh, have had trouble. You know, you've lit the whole pipe except there's this one little spot in the bowl that you can't get lit, right? You know, there's always uh, there's you know, always that one. There's spot. always that one little spot. Yeah. Well, with the old boy, it's you have incredible, uh, you know, uh, you know, precision on where you can put that uh, that flame into the bowl because uh, okay. it's just very very versatile. It's it's really amazing. It really is designed uh, to be the perfect pipe lighter. Is it? And you may have already said it. Is is it Japanese? Uh, it is Japanese. Okay, that's right. right. That's yeah. right. I, I figured with Kabuto, because that's like a theater thing, right? Uh, I don't know. Kabuto theater. I, I have no idea. I think that's right. I could uh, be wrong. Is it Kabuki? Is oh, yes, it is Kabuki. Yes, that's what I. I don't say. know what that means either. And now we lost all our Japanese. But uh, I know, right? <laughs> 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 all the Texans are gone. All the Japanese are gone. Right? Uh, <laughs> we ran. We even ran out the Mississippians. It's yeah, awful. We yeah. got a Venezuelan tonight. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for the one person um, still listening. That's we, right. <laughs> we appreciate. You. All right. Um, so that was number two. So th- oh, yeah. this is number two. Yeah, I, I, I do. I love the slider. The heft of it is really nice. It's very easy to refill to. Uh, and to adjust, which is which is great, um, and and this is a flint lighter, and so the old boy flint lighters are you know they're they're nice because the flint is 
is so much more reliable. It's one of those things that it's just not going to go out. The mm-hmm. only thing you're going to have to do is replace the flint. Uh, you know, eventually at some point, decades down the road, you may have to replace the flint wheel if the if the lighter was abused. But um, but it's just a really durable, durable design. That would seem to be a very small critical component. I, I would imagine yeah. replacing that's not exactly just an easy feat. Yeah, no, I think I think so. That's why the flint is so easy because it's just one of those things that you can you know pop in and pop out. They okay. sell flints you know anywhere. Oh, interesting. But okay. but replacing that little uh, the wheel itself, you know, the little quartz thing. Uh, you know, that's something that, you know, you're going to have to find someone that specializes in that. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, oftentimes a lot of these lighter manufacturers, they'll go in and out of business or, uh, you know, maybe they don't service that style of lighter anymore or something like that. Uh, with a flint, it's just so great because it's uh, it's just a, a really, really old technology that, um, you know, obviously... I mean, that's how hey, probably fire wasn't can't, started. Can't so. mess with the class. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the cons on this, there's no built-in tamper on this pipe uh, or on this pipe lighter. The um, the Karibi old boy uh, lacks the built-in tamper that the Corona lacks, that the Corona has. Um, and, I th- and I think, you know, that that is a con, but I'll be honest, most people that use the old boy lighter that has a built-in tamper do not use the tamper that is built in uh, because it's just such a, it's not that it's impractical. It's just kind of small and clumsy. It just doesn't do a great job. And so a lot, most folks that are going to take the time uh, to purchase a, you know, really high end lighter like the Karibi or certainly like the Corona, um, you know, they, they're going to have a tamper that they really know and love and per, are probably not going to use the tamper that's built into the, to the lighter. So, um, anyway, so this does not have a built-in tamper. That's kind of a con. Uh, there's also no fuel window on here, so you can't tell how much uh, gas is actually in here. Huh. Um, and so that's that's something, uh, you know, typical. Well, but you can feel of, it out a little bit, right? Uh, not really with the gas. Oh, you know, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't, it's just so light, it doesn't really change the the heft of it very much. And so, okay. um, yeah, you, you know, it's just kind of hard to tell uh, on on the Karibi and the Corona if it's got, um, you know, a... a a good amount of fuel in there. So a lot of folks, when they're carrying this really nice lighter, they'll take a backup Bic lighter, <laughs> you know, just to make sure they don't uh, don't run out of juice when they're on the road. So um, also because this cap uh, toggle thing is so easy to to open with that little uh, fin that is kind of unique and, and signature to Karibi, um, it, it, it can actually open easily, more easily anyway, in your pocket, mm. uh, which is something to think about. So uh, it is much easier to open. Then you're a liar, liar. And the, because your pants, your pants are on fire, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, and so that that's something to think about. <laughs> Old boys, uh, you know, one thing I'll mention. You actually kind of, uh, you know, discussed this earlier, but. Old boys aren't for everyone. Uh, you know, are they're 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 just intimidating. They they're kinda, are, but like they, you know, and I and also be that you kind of you kind of have to have like this. Uh, you know, coordination thing going on to be able to use it. Of course, you know, I, I'm the last person you want to talk to about coordination because I, I have these tremors, which are just terrible. But, um, but you know, they, uh, they, they really are, they require some level of just, uh, you know, familiarity to, to use them. I remember smoking uh, a pipe on my porch uh, many nights with our friend, the judge, uh, oh, Bo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and every time I he needed to relight his pipe, I'd try to hand him my old boy lighter, and he'd be like, "No, nah, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that." You just like, "I don't, don't give me that. That that is, <laughs> that thing's stupid." Like he would just rather not smoke his pipe than if if the only way to smoke it was with the old boy lighter. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, which I totally get that. So, um, but but anyway, coming in at number two is the Karibi. Hey, but you um, know what? You know, I know it was kind of uh, kind of neck and neck there, but you know what would have probably put the Corona uh, got, gotten it. Just above the edge. What? If it had a lime with it. If it had a lime. Ah, that's right. That is right. That is right. Yeah. All right. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Uh, this is gonna probably. Uh, I don't know. People are gonna laugh at this. So there is a in in thinking about you know top three lighters. Okay. You know, obviously I could have gone. Okay, just the nicest lighters out there. We could all have three hundred dollar lighters that we're talking about here. Um, or I could have gone, you know, with the prettiest ones or the ones that are most reliable or whatever. I tried to just kind of have a spectrum here um, of things that I considered when I when I talked about the the top three. Yeah, yeah. 
um the the number one is okay, a match the number no, <laughs> the, the number one the number one right it's a match it's a piece of uh you know bark that we've lit on fire with right. a blowtorch right um it, the number one uh that that i think is a, is a really hard lighter to find nowadays and it's one that uh, every time it comes in the shop uh here at the squire it is coveted and the people that still have them hang on to them and they hang on to them and, and have uh, yeah i've seen people actually throw down money in the shop to offer to buy these lighters from other folks because they're just hard to find uh nowadays so um I, I think that's because maybe the company that makes them has gone in and out of business a few times over the past decade um but i'm talking about the imco g77 pipe lighter oh snap okay now there used to be like 10 of these things up here and in prepping for tonight's show i could not find one i'm sure there's i'm uh, you know when we get done tonight and when i'm packing up to go home uh, I'll, I'll, g70 the imco imco g77 now the the g77 is interesting imco more recently has come out with several uh lighters that are uh you know really 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 crummy like they're really shoddy construction and all that but this the g77 this is a lighter it is the nokia cell phone of the lighter world okay? oh snap and this is this These is a lighter kids don't know what that means man. this is this is a lighter that i have seen just just thoroughly abused for literally decades i mean just <laughs> decades i mean like i you know I, I i've got you know customers that have owned the same imco pipe lighter for I mean, literally 25 years right and it just looks like death <laughs> Man. but but it is so consistent and it always works it's just an amazing workhorse lighter um you know what's funny about those old nokia I, I'm, I'm i'm going off on the tangent uh, <laughs> here real quick but but you, you gotta understand back in the day this was my area of expertise like my my old life i was in telecom and the funny thing is these nokia phones for those that don't don't remember are too young for this uh, they were some of the first style cell phones that were out there and they were just a brick. You could throw it against the wall. They'd survive. Anything. Yeah. You could drop them off a building. Nokia actually, after, you know, you had the, the, the Motorola razor, which kind of changed the game. And then you had like a lot of these flip phones came in, but there's a, a, a big outcry for them to go back to those old school, uh, Nokia 55s or fifties, I think is what they were. And, uh, and so Nokia remade them, but they, th they misunderstood why people wanted them. Yeah. So they meet, remade them in style only, but not in durability. But not in, yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And so it was like, like, no, no, no. This is not what people want this phone for. Yeah. They want it so that they can just abuse it. Yeah, abuse it and play Snake. <laughs> exactly. And that's literally it. And that is it. Right. That, that's all it would do. <laughs> that, but, that's all I want. Yeah, the, the MCO G77, this is a lighter. Does it play um, Snake? It does not play Snake. Okay, all right. Well, uh, and, it, and it doesn't have a camera either, just ju just like the, well, the but that, that's the same. Uh, but the um, an outstanding workhorse this is the this is the number one lighter for reliability versus price okay um it's just one of those things that um you know this is such a cheap lighter it's ugly as you know sin uh but it just it just works and it works every time so it's a flint striker wheel um the flint uh actually what's really nice about it, it's easy to put the flint in but the the g77 it actually has a spot in it for you to put an extra flint to carry with you and so Ooh. you've always got an extra flint. You actually have to take the take the insert for the top uh, apart. You actually just pull it out, and hidden inside there is actually another flint. Uh, and you can so always tote an extra flint with you. So if you're on the road and your uh, lighter runs out, then you've got your extra flint with you. Really, Man. really great. I don't know why like no other company ever just you know stumbled upon. Seems that like a no came brainer out with that. But yeah, um, it, the the adjuster wheel on the bottom is incredibly. Uh, large and so it's just real easy to adjust. That's one thing about the old boy lighters, uh, the Corona and the uh, Caribbean. They're a little hard to adjust uh, the bottom on, um, but uh, you know they're uh, just incredibly easy to use. The soft flame is uh, you know very very accurate. Uh, it always maintains a nice structure. Uh, a lot of these uh, you know lighters, what they tend to do is they kind of uh, the flame gets lower and lower quality over time, and so. Uh, you know, you'll start with a real crisp flame, but as the lighter gets older, it'll kind of turn in more into just like a, like a blowtorch kind of thing, you know? <laughs> and so with the, with the, um, uh, Imco, it's just, you know, over time tends to be incredibly durable and, 
and, and, and very reliable. So this is a lighter that just strikes. It, it just lights every time you strike it, literally. I mean, it just it just does. Well, they got their own built-in backup. I mean, that, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's an incredible lighter. So it's hard to find these things. It really is. And, um, you know, there are a lot of a lot of cons about this. But, I mean, you know, we're talking about a $12 lighter. So, I mean, that's something that you have to consider. I mean, you know, that's, that's why I put it at the top of the list because, you know, for – for quality and, for and and function, no, but you know, for function versus you know how much you're paying for it. I mean, yeah. you could buy, I mean, gosh, what do you you buy twenty of these things for the same cost that you'd buy a you know a, a Corona, right? So I mean, it's just crazy. But um, you know, obviously, some some things to think about. They are hard to find. Um, the uh, you know, the, there are not good looking lighters. These are not particularly handsome handsome lighters. They don't have any built in tampers or anything like that. Um. And uh, and there's also no fuel gauge on the side of it, uh, like like most uh, you know of the Caribbees and, and Coronas. So um, it, it scuffs easily, so it can you know just look uh, you know kind of kind of worn, haggard, and and all that. And there's um, there's there's no warranty on these lighters, but they're just so incredibly versatile. You don't have to worry about them. But say I can't they get, work I can't get warranty every they on work $12 lighter. I, exactly right <laughs> exactly. But they you know they work every time. They're uh, super consistent. And uh, and real easy to use and um and, and yeah I I have seen so many people come in this shop and ask for that specific lighter and typically uh, we're not able to get them just because of the you know the rarity of them nowadays but um but I I have actually seen people throw down money in the shop to try to buy li that lighter off of other people really? which is really really kind of fascinating like so, for um, more money uh yeah no like thirty bucks. So like here, I'll give you so, for this so lighter. The Jeep is a good investment, right there. Yeah, you can get your hands good. on one. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can double your money. Now, beware if you're looking for an Imco pipe lighter on um, on the internet. There are a few different kinds. Imco uh, has come out with some with some other styles uh, of pipe lighter that are similar but not the same. If if it's online uh, looks, if it's got a built-in tamper. It's not the one we're talking about. Not the one. That's not the one we're talking about. Okay. If if the one you find has a built-in tamper, don't get that one. That one's that one is only well, good enough. You want it, but that's that, not that one's not even worth being a paperweight. Oh, like snap. it's just it's just bad. Yeah, oh. that, that's a bad lighter. Um, and, and you know, it, it just don't fool with it. But the but the Imco G77, it, it just has an angled top. It comes in black or silver, and that's it. And it is uh, it, it's just a workhorse. It's a great lighter. Man. Yeah, it's the Colt 40, 50, 45, Colt 45. It's a Colt 45 <laughs> of pipeline. You know so much about guns. No, wait, the Colt 45, that's a beverage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it, it is. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. You're right. Oh, it's Colt both. 45, you know, uh, Billy D right. works every time. <laughs> That's two Billy D references in one episode of Country Squire Radio. Honorable mention pipe lighters. Yeah, um, <laughs> we've got uh, of match. course the uh, <laughs> the right the match the uh, the old boy from Corona. Uh, you know, similar to Karibi, um, you know, it's a, uh, you know, beautiful lighter, uh, nice warranty on it and all that, but uh, much more expensive. And I, I think the functionality of the Karibi is a lot, a lot better. Um, the uh, Zippo traditional pipe lighter, just the insert that comes with the Zippo uh, itself is a, is very, in, it's incredibly functional. It works every time you use it, as long as it's got fluid in it. Um, and so that's the thing it, you know, if you're, if you're okay with the smell and the taste of the fluid uh, and you can keep the fluid in it, you know, that's uh it's an incredibly functional thing uh, for that. Um, lighters, I would avoid, uh, just completely avoid. Um, I would avoid Zycar and Calibri pipe lighters. And these are companies that are great, but for whatever reason, they, they make great torch lighters, but for whatever reason, they have not mastered the pipe lighter. And, and I have sent more you know, the great thing about Zycar is they actually stand behind every piece they do. And so that's great. Like if you buy a Zycar, you can run over it with your car and they will replace it for you. Oh, like that's that, why it's they that, that. It's that kind of, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, <laughs> exactly. It's that kind of warranty though. And they stand behind their stuff. But the, the problem is, is you will send that lighter back. I, I just, I have sold enough of these things and seen enough of them to, to know you will send your Zycar or Calibri lighter back in for repair it's just going to happen and so um you know if you if you go into it knowing that and that at some point you're going to have to have that lighter repaired um that's great uh but you know just know that it's it's coming all so, right yeah well, anyway so that's it yep. top three lighters well you know the great thing is no matter what lighter you have if you're lighting a, a pipe of good quality pipe tobacco uh you want to light it in a pipe 
that is going to be there to enjoy every single flavor that pipe tobacco has to offer. Yeah. And of course, I'm talking about the pipes available from Missouri Meerschaum. That's right. That's right. And and it's so nice to be able to light a Missouri Meerschaum with a lighter, obviously. It's a durable pipe, and so it can hold up to the flame as as long as it's not 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 being uh, bad. uh, held held to the cob too uh, too long. I, I have charred my uh, my country gentleman pretty 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 heavily because that is typically the uh, the pipe that I use whenever I'm fishing, uh, and it, it's whenever I'm fishing. By the way, I use a big lighter like that is that is my go to yeah. whenever yeah. I'm out on the water. Uh, and the thing is, with the way that I light it, I always light <laughs> light right on the side, so you can always tell uh, which side of the pipe that I've been lighting on it. But I got to tell you that country gentleman, excellent smoke, especially if you're out there fishing. I love to fish. I'll be fishing very, very soon here out in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We've got to get things ready for the Grand Rapids meetup. And with me, I will be smoking uh, my country gentleman gentleman from Missouri Meerschaum. It's a great classic shape. It's got a really nice uh, rustic finish with that kind of, uh, you know, uh, blackened, uh, worn look. Really, really nice. Generous sized bowl. Comes in a bent and a straight variety and uh and, and it's a great it's a great starter pipe if you uh, are just getting into pipe smoking or or if you're a veteran and uh, want something that you don't have to worry about absolutely and hey if you've got a country gentleman smoke it this week take a picture tweet it into us we'll retweet it out it's a great way to show the good folks at missouri meerschaum you appreciate them for sponsoring this show pipe question of the week comes in from tom wester now tom writes in he said i was hoping at some point you could address the following question this is uh information that i've been curious about since i started smoking a pipe and an answer from a tobacconist would interest me greatly what here's the question what is the current state of taxation uh percentage wise and the availability of pipe tobacco particularly regarding shipping across state lines Interesting. So th- this is a complex question. We've got several pieces here. Is it um, kind of like the alcohol, the beer situation, where like there's like different rules for different cities and yeah, that, okay. that's exactly right. That's exactly you know we know federal tobacco tax, right? So there's a federal excise tax on tobacco products. Right now, uh, on on pipe tobacco, uh, it's actually two dollars and eighty three cents a pound uh, for. Um, for pipe tobacco, okay. Now, now you never you never see that as the consumer, right? So when I when I purchase tobacco to sell at my shop, I'm paying that two dollars and eighty three cents a pound to the manufacturer. Okay. okay, I'm I'm paying that to the manufacturer. It's built into my price to the manufacturer. And but then at the state level, do they also pay that? By the way, when they're getting the actual like, that's right. They, okay, they're they're it. passing that cost along to me. Okay, that, got that's it. Okay. that's as as a as a retailer or a distributor. Gotcha. Um. Now when it when it comes into the state, though, so let's say you know we live in Mississippi, so you know the the tobacco product enters into Mississippi. You've got typically, uh, it's state by state, but you've got you know so many hours or days or. Or, uh, or weeks to pay your excise tax on that tobacco for the state. So it's been taxed on the federal level, and then it's going to be taxed on your state level. And in some municipalities and cities, they've got a tax as well, or maybe some kind of usage tax or, or you know, um, license privilege license or something like that. And, and all these are things that have to be factored in to the price of the tobacco product. And that's before you pay sales tax, okay? So we're, we haven't even talked about sales tax. Sure, yet. sure, sure. Um, and, and so um, it, it, the federal excess tax, again, it's $2.83 a pound. Um, that is actually lower than the roll-your-own tobacco. And so a lot of folks that, you know, have smoked roll-your-own tobacco in the past, think of, uh, you know, drum, uh, bally shag, things like that. Uh, Amsterdam Shag, uh, American Spirit, Roll Your Own Tobacco. A lot of those folks have switched over to pipe tobacco because the, you know, the taxes are actually cheaper, much cheaper on on pipe tobacco. So um, once it comes into your state, then that that is built into it as well. Um, and so you know you've got uh, states like Mississippi. Uh, we have a flat fifteen percent. Uh, excise tax on all tobacco products that come into our state. Oh, interesting. So I so as soon as the product comes into to my shop, uh, to the Country Squire, I have to you know let's say it's a let's say it's a hundred dollar product and it's a, it's a tobacco product. I have to immediately send the state of Mississippi. Actually, I've got twenty four hours, uh, forty eight hours actually. I've got forty eight hours to send the state of Mississippi fifteen dollars for that hundred dollar purchase okay. of of tobacco. That's on cigars as well. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. It's it's 
universal highest of high end cigars. Or... Yeah, and and it, that depends by state too. Uh, oh, really? Actually, oh, wow. in in a state like Alabama, uh, you've got cigars that I believe are only taxed at five or I'm sorry, four cents a cigar. So it could be a twenty dollar cigar or it could be a three dollar cigar but it's only four cents a cigar. But then there's a separate tax for pipe tobacco that I think is a percentage-based thing. So it's it's all over the map as far as that goes. Uh, states like Mississippi, we actually have kind of a low excise tax. Uh, you've got, um, you know, states like Arkansas, which neighbor us, they have, uh, I believe, 40, 40% .40 excise tax on their premium tobacco products. I've got uh, <laughs> one one customer that uh, that very much laments uh, the the location he lives. The only reason he does is because of the uh, the tobacco issues. Uh, he, as he refers to it, he lives in the People's Republic of the State of Washington, and <laughs> <laughs> and and he uh, he is very resentful of the fact that uh, you know the the excise tax in Washington State. Uh, is north of fifty percent. I'm, I'm not. I'm actually not sure of wow. what the what the number is there. Um, and I, and and actually, uh, you know, on our website, we actually say we cannot ship and we don't ship uh, to the state of Washington any tobacco products. Interesting. Um, so now that's th more now this about goes not being able to afford it than it is legality. Is that correct? No, that's it. It, it actually or, is a le illegal oh, issue. Wow. And so okay, and, gotcha. and this goes kind of to the other part of Tom's question. So it it depends on state by state the availability. So it, this is why it's such an incredible. We're about to start a new series where we're gonna have to take every tobacco state. laws, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's like, right, <laughs> right. Name that state's tobacco. You Better know, know your state's tobacco. Tobacco, laws you know, taxes. laws. Yeah, right. It's just funny. crazy. But anyway, states like Washington State and Maine, uh, these are states where it's actually illegal for you know a retailer outside of the state like us to send tobacco into the state, uh, and so that's why on a lot of you know retailer websites online whether it be cigars or pipe tobacco, that'll say, you know, something like we do not ship uh, tobacco products to these states and they'll list two or three states. And so, um, so anyway, just something to, something to keep in mind. It's a patchwork thing. Um, you know, uh, you know, as far as how far away we are from having to stockpile tobaccos before they become impractically expensive, <laughs> right, uh, you know, right. it depends on the state you live in. You know, if you live in a high tax state, you can order it from a low tax state like Mississippi, but in, unless you live in a state like Washington where it's illegal to, you know, import them, uh, you know, over the internet. What if you cross the border? And that's a whole different question, oh, right? So, so I, I mean, I don't know. Are you breaking the law if you drive to Idaho and you go buy your, you know, pipe tobacco and then bring it into, uh, into Washington state to hoard it and consume it? I, I have no idea. Surely. But that might be one of those just, you know, maybe ask for forgiveness. Not yeah. I mean, I, that, that's the thing. I don't know. I, I mean, I really don't know. You know, it's, uh, you know, like in, uh, in Mississippi, you know, a lot of folks go over the state lines to buy, uh, you know, liquor and alcohol in Louisiana because in Louisiana, liquor and alcohol is as cheap as water. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it, because well, and for a while there, we, we had to drive either to Tennessee or Louisiana to actually get certain beers that we could not get in Mississippi. That's right. In some cases we still do. And, and that, so I, yeah, I exactly. think there are some, some folks actually that have questioned the legality of that. So mm -hmm. these are great questions. You know, it really depends on, uh, your location. Um, it, all this goes back to, uh, and, and we're running, on time here, so I'm gonna shut up. But all <laughs> all this goes to uh, the the incredible importance that it that it is that you know it, it is so incredibly important. I'm stumbling all over my words tonight. It is so incredibly important for each of us as as pipe enthusiasts to be vocal uh, and active on the local level uh, because these are the things that are are affecting us, local and the national level. Obviously, with the FDA, we've seen this stuff crop up. Um, you know, these are these are uh, um, things that are directly affected by uh, things like elections and and write ins and uh, letters to the editor and things of that nature. So so keep that in mind. Um, we have more control over this than we might think. Um, and uh, and I'll leave that at that. All right, man. That's good. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, Tom, for that question. And hey, if you've got a pipe question of the week, send it in show at countrysquareradio.com. Quick fire Chris Jones. Ow! All right, man. These question choir questions come in from thispipelife.com. Thispipelife.com, an amazing online community. Learn more about that here in just a minute. This comes in from user Ghosts of Pompeii. Okay. Uh, now, of course, have we heard of Go from Ghosts of Pompeii before? Ghosts is he's represented a couple of times, honestly. But uh, but yeah, actually, this is carrying on uh, from the list that was begot last week uh and it's kind of carrying over into this <laughs> the week. begotten list yeah the begotten, the begotten list, list. Of Pompeii. Right. <laughs> all right here we go you ready yep washboard abs or playing a washboard hillbilly in, jug a, hi band. in, in a, a hillbilly jug band in a hillbilly jug band 
okay, would I rather have washboard abs or would I rather be playing a washboard in a hillbilly jug band? That's the question. That's the question. It's quick fire. I give me the jug band. Absolutely. Like I look, I'm 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 over 30 years old. Like the It ain't happening. The time for me to have washboard abs it was never. I don't even like Forget that. That's yeah, not going to happen. No, I, you know, like, even if you magically got washboard abs like tonight, you'd have to maintain them. No, forget that. Exactly. No, that, I mean, my Mexican Cokes would be out the door, Bluebell <laughs> ice cream, like my champagne of beers. Oh, man. Well, now I, that, that, but that might be a pro in the, in the favorite <laughs> washboard. But I'll, I'll, I'll say this uh, sign me up for the nearest Mount Opry and hand me the washboard and the, um, what do you call the things? The, the, wa the washers, right? The, that you actually put on your fingers when you're playing the water. Oh, board? I don't know. Yeah, oh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You're tapping on that thing. You're you're scraping it, and you're you got your you know jug thing, and you got a piece of grass in your mouth, yeah. and you're probably wearing like a like a wife beater, yeah. and you know it's just you're just you know it's it just it's just there's, great. There's this guy down. You can New totally Orleans. get away with not bathing, and it's and you and you can perform. It, it's it, fantastic. It'd be preferable if you didn't bathe. Oh, I think it's he's part of the in. experience. There's yeah. this, there's this guy in New Orleans that actually plays a washboard, and he also has like like little bells like attached to it, and even like one of those little um bling kind of bleep, like uh ring the bell at the counter. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. He's got that nailed onto the side of it that he, he also plays that while he's doing his washboard. It's, it's incredible. Uh, smoking a pipe or smoking a salmon? Smoking a pipe. I mean, you know. You, you, I love smoked salmon, but I'll let you smoke it. Exactly. And then I'll eat it. Who, who are you asking? Uh, I'll smoke a pipe while you smoke the salmon. That's right. Uh, more fun at an Italian wedding or a Polish wedding? Uh, Do you know very many Poles? I I have never been to an Italian wedding or a Polish wedding. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's gonna I be sausage. actually don't know much about Polish food or customs. I know, you know, both these countries are predominantly Catholic, so they're probably going to be huge weddings Big with time. lots of, lots of, uh, lots of, you know, you know, partying. So I don't know. I, I imagine the wine would be better at an Italian wedding. Yeah, but maybe the food's better at the Polish. I would wedding. imagine the food's better at the Polish. Yeah. I, okay. I'm going to say, I know I'm going to have fun at an Italian wedding, mm. but yeah, so I'm going to go with it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, liked, I liked watching your thought process. And we just that. lost Poland. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Italian wedding for me as well. Jack the Ripper or Mac the Knife? Gosh. Um, uh, yeah, I guess Jack the Ripper because uh, I know more about him. I, know. I do know there's a song that, that Louis Armstrong sung about Mac the Knife. But is, that's, was that's it a, historically based off of an actual Mac the Knife? I have no idea. I don't know if it was like the story of the hurricane type situation. Hur hurricane? I have no idea. All right, yeah. yeah. Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, snap, crackle, or pop? Uh, pop. Oh, man, I was going to go with pop, but we, we, we've we been we've agreed on everything, and I wanted to throw it off at yeah. the, the tail end. Uh, I will go with... Um, you know, you're a crackle guy. Uh, you know, like that crackle. I, you know, I say, oh, snap a lot. So much so, by the way, that like my, my four-year-old, um, when, when, <laughs> when testing the waters as far as what they can and cannot say, will say, snap, and then just kind of look at me, like wondering, like, <laughs> did I say a bad word? <laughs> Trying to like feel it out, you know? It's so uh, is that one of those words daddy can say, but I can't exactly. Say? That's funny. I'm gonna go with snap. Okay, good. All right, good questions. Ghost of Pompeii. I'm telling you, man, Ghost of Pompeii brings it. Good job. Good job. Of course, Ghost of Pompeii is bringing it over at the forums at thispipelife.com. If you have not joined yet, you absolutely should use the code CSR when you register at thispipelife.com. It's absolutely free, one way or the other. But when you use the code CSR, it lets them know that you heard about it on this show. So do that, thispipelife.com. Use the code CSR when you register at thispipelife.com. Do we really just tell people that we chose playing a washboard in a hillbilly jug band over having perfect washboard abs? The maintaining. I feel like I really need to make sure this is clear because if you get them, like even if you have Look, today, I'd, I'd love to have washboard abs. Hey, who knows? Maybe I do. Is the implication... <laughs> I don't. All right. Is the implication <laughs> that you get to keep them? That's the question. Yeah, I, you know, if you get to keep them, then yeah, that'd be nice. It's a great moment in the Flash season or series premiere where after he's struck by lightning, he wakes up and he's got washboard abs. And he goes, lightning gave me abs. And I remember thinking, lightning, strike me. Strike me, lightning. <laughs> All right, so here we go. That's listener great. feedback. We got some great listener feedback in. Uh, the first one is a email, I believe. Uh, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, from it comes Robert. from Robert Willie. He says, uh, you might investigate the Voyager as an archetypal pipe smoker. 
Um, this is a good this is a good comment here. He says there were canoe paddlers in the fur trade in Canada and the northern United States. It's an understanding. It is my understanding uh, that they measured the length of a trip in pipes. Uh, it Ooh. seems that they actually would paddle for about 50 minutes and then rest for 10 minutes to and smoke a pipe. Uh, they would talk about the journey's length as how many pipes it would take for them to get to point A to point B, one place to another. Uh, and he says, thanks for your efforts, Robert. So uh, interesting. I've never heard that before. I, I'd love, you know, maybe some of our friends from uh, from that part of the, the country and from uh, Canada to uh, clue us in if you're familiar with that. I, I'm actually not familiar with that, but that's what a great story. I, I'd love to measure my trips by my pipe. Yeah, I mean, we've heard of, of course, measuring the uh, the the amount of work it takes to fix a problem in pipes. Of course, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, it's a three pipe problem. Three pipe problem. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's great. And of course, uh, referencing uh, to last week's episode of the the pipe cultural archetypes, we did the soldier and the sailor. That we kind of finished the episode. Even had kind of some uh, after after the the podcast was done recording, we kind of kept the live feed going and had a bit of a discussion as to whether or not there should be like a traveler or a voyager. Yeah, yeah, or, absolutely. You know, because there was a strong case being made for the truck driver, and we're trying to figure out where that fit in. But um, yeah, the voyager, the traveler, I, I we'll definitely take that into consideration to, to add to that uh, series. All right, we also got an iTunes review in from John J. Shung, who said, uh, my first review and my first order. I've been listening to CSR for a few years now. It's part of my weekly routine to sit, listen, and learn from the wisdom of John David and the hilarity that ensues with Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Well, I'm glad we know what each of us are good for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we've kind of found our wheelhouse there. The review is extremely belated, uh, but not as belated as my first order of tobacco that I finally made at the Country Squire today. Thanks to John David for his gracious and generous customer service over the phone. Can't wait to smoke my new tobaccos in my country, gentlemen. Woohoo! The next time I sit to listen to CSR. Again, that's from John. Man, thanks so much. Thanks, that's John. That's review. that's wonderful. Yeah, it was really nice to talk to you the other day. We're uh, we're glad you finally finally called in. So. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Well, guys, we really appreciate this uh, this feedback. Of course, uh, we've we've seen you on the live show having a, a fun time with all of the uh, the tweets and such. Um, we want to encourage you, by the way, if you've not tuned in for a live show, absolutely do it. CountrySquireRadio.com is a place to do it. You can join us live on Monday nights uh, for the after hour show at eight thirty p.m. Central Time. That's six thirty uh, p- Pacific. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm I'm mixing mixing up all my uh, my words. I believe well. in you. You got it. 8.30 p.m. Central Time, that's 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. Again, that's CountrySquareRadio.com. You can also keep up with us throughout the week. You can follow me. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore Country Squire. Of course, all that information and more can be found at CountrySquireRadio.com. Well, man, dude, fun episode, man. Top three lighters. I enjoyed kind of analyzing my thoughts about uh, about the best lighters. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, I see the daily frustrations that pipe smokers have with what they use to light their pipe. Mm. And, and and I see it all the time, right? I see the things that come in and, uh, you know, who's complaining about what, which, which uh, you know, things bother them the most, what they have to send off to get repaired constantly, uh, things that they come in and are like, can you fix this? And I'm like either yes or no, you know, so I don't know. It's just fun to go in kind of that memory bank and, and figure out uh, kind of what my top three were. I got to say, based on your description, the old boy lighter is no longer as intimidating to me as it was before. So oh, that's good. Yeah. Don't, don't let it, uh, don't let it intimidate you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's, uh, a good, it's a good lighter. Before we do the official sign off, shout out again to uh, Josh for joining us here at the, uh, at the, for the live recording in the shop. We really appreciate you being here, brother. And uh, yeah, man. Hey, let's go have a day or it's night. A- Let's go have a night. (laughs) See you, brother. Man, I slipped into like old school mode there for a minute. (laughs) All over the place. This is what happens. Normally I drink on the show. Right. And I'm I'm completely just just completely sober. Yeah. This is what happens. When I'm sober, I mess up. Yeah, no, you you really can't handle it. I don't have sobriety for you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) That's a terrible thing to say. Bye, guys. (laughs) Good night, y'all.